from Washington, D.C. It's the Cube covering Dot Next Conference. Brought to you by Nutanix. We're back at Nutanix.next. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm here with my longtime co-host, Stu Miniman. Don Mims is here. He's the Director of Infrastructure and Virtualization at Baylor Scott and White Health. Don, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks Cube. for having me. I appreciate it being here. It's yeah, so nice. Baylor Scott and White Health. We weren't familiar with that before we met you. Tell us a little bit about the organization. Sure, so uh, Baylor Scott and White Health is based in, uh, in Dallas, Texas. We've uh, recently had, over the last couple of years, a uh, merger opportunity. We uh, merged with uh, Scott and White uh, that is down in Temple, Texas, which is a little farther east or west and south of Dallas. And um, we've grown our organization to uh, uh, around 40 hospitals, over 500 clinics, uh, and uh, we're continuing to grow and, uh, and make strides in the healthcare space. The Dallas is booming. I mean, obviously world-class city, with world-class healthcare. Um, talk about some of the things that are happening in healthcare that are sort of driving your strategy, the challenges that you guys are having. I mean, obviously there's, there's EMR, there's meaningful use, there's you know, changes in the Affordable Care Act, all that stuff that and or other things that are really driving strategy and creating sure. challenges for you. Yeah, one of the biggest uh, things that we're doing right now is moving into the, uh, the digital space. So uh, the patient-centered uh, focus being in a traditional brick and mortar facility is shifting. Uh, patients want quicker access to data, quicker access to physicians. So being able to uh, create solutions that can deliver uh, a physician and patient experience possibly from a mobile device, a phone, a tablet, a PC, is where we're moving the market towards. So some of the solutions that we're, that we're building and delivering are uh, enabling a faster delivery of technology. For you know, healthcare. sort of, when you think about last decade, docs were sort of averse somewhat to technology. You're right. Mobile really changed that, hasn't it? It has. Uh, how has that affected your, the back-end infrastructures? So it definitely has to be more robust. As you're delivering content now, uh, video, uh, web chats, things like that that have to be reliable because now patient outcomes depend on that type of data delivery. Uh, the back end has to be uh, available uh, more than ever at this time. So it's kind of, you actually kind of have an IOT use case We're in the there. hospitals, right? And then when you start pushing video around, That's it's, right. it's got to be very challenging. Now you're also doing some, some projects around DNA sequencing, is that is that right? We are, it's a very exciting space. Uh, we recently uh, delivered a solution on Nutanix to uh, create a DNA sequencing uh, platform that uh, hasn't been done before, uh, as we know it. The, the vendor, uh, this was a first time for the vendor, a first time for Baylor, and it uh, has been very successful uh, implementation and it's, it's, it's a very robust system today. Doc, can you bring us inside a little bit? What were the requirements you were looking for? What led you down the path to Nutanix? Had you been using them before? Or was sure. this the first use case? It's actually not the first use case. Um, the project actually started out as a, it was a migration. The, the, the customer was using a, a hosted solution. It was slow, their sequencing data was taking a long time, uh, their results were, were being held up because of the way their architecture was set up. So we decided to bring it in-house and put it on a platform that was uh, kind of new to us and try to deliver it with better speed and, and, and it definitely has done that. And does that trickle down to, you know, what does that mean to the cost of the solutions? I mean, I think we all know it, you know, DNA use, sequencing used to take a long time a and long a lot time. of money, and it's now, you know, kind of do a swab <laughs> type things, and it, it's done yeah, a lot Yeah, so uh, with this platform, uh, the customer, the, the physician, is now not only going to use this platform to get results quicker, we're also going to start uh, potentially offering this as a service to others. Uh, and help other physicians and other clinics also get their results quicker as well. So it's going to grow over time to just an in-house solution to maybe a something more broad scale. So you saw the keynotes this morning. Um, they're pushing a lot of information at us. Obviously, we, Stu and I talked about it on our <coughs> open. Nutanix, a couple years ago, sort of pivoted beyond hyper-converged infrastructure, trying to position yeah. as cloud, even though they still sell a lot of hyper-converged infrastructure, let's face it. But as a, as a consumer, as a practitioner, how does that message relate to you? You have a lot of vendors trying to sell to you. You got cloud, different cloud yeah. strategies, cloud, 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 right. DevOps, <laughs> new containers. So, do you, what do you want to see from a company like Nutanix? Do you want them to like stick to their knitting? Hey, just give me hyper-converged infrastructure, 
Or do you want them to take you on, on a journey? I wonder if you could add some color to that. Sure, and, and where you're going with that question is exactly the reason we chose this solution, because it's, it's way bigger than just a hyper-converge you know, uh, solution. That was, for me, that was kind of the first thing. That, mm -hmm. that was, that's what got us hooked. Uh, and then the innovation that's come you know, since then, and things that we've learned about the product and where they're going with, with automation, my, you know, migration strategies of current workloads, the, the ease of management, the cloud strategy, the partnerships that they're making now with other, with other partners. Uh, that's really what I like to see, and that continued growth is why we chose this product, because they have that vision, and it's really, it's really appealing. And so, do you, are you using public cloud today? We are, uh, in a very limited uh, manner. As you can imagine, healthcare and, and personal health information in the cloud is, can be kind of scary to some people. So, um, we have started that uh, uh, roadmap, and we continue to try to expand that as we go. Is it fair to say that, as an infrastructure professional, that you're, you're if, can I summarize your infrastructure strategy as you would like to substantially mimic the attributes of a public cloud where it makes sense on-prem. Is that, that fair? That's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, speed to delivery, server provisioning, uh, uh, resiliency of the infrastructure, uh, invisible infrastructure, you might have heard that term today or over the past few days. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Self-service or no? Uh, Self-service internally right now. So my own staff are going to use the automation internally to deliver quicker. And then eventually, as we perfect that, we'll, we'll let our customers uh, self-service so, as well. So be as cloud-like as possible, but not too cloud-like too, too soon. Exactly. So do you feel as though, as an IT pro, that you are on the path to, a, to achieving that vision? I do. We are, at Baylor, we're breaking new grounds with uh, what we've done uh, recently, and I think the, the long-term vision to where we want to be is going to be, uh, is going to be big over the next few so years. So we get, we get into a lot of discussions with folks in our community that are you know, kind of cloud bigots, I'll call them. And they say, hey, the, the vendors like Nutanix, and even more so, vendors like IBM and HPE and you know, EMC, and their customers will never be able to achieve what Amazon achieves. Right. My question to you is, and you probably agree with that, I mean, Amazon's ahead of you, I bet. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> yeah. but yeah. He, I would hope. But, how do you feel about that? Is that okay? Uh, do you lose sleep over that? Or do you feel as though, hey, we've made so much progress? I wonder if you could yeah. comment on that as an IT pro. Yeah, sure, so briefly on that topic, uh, Amazon's business model is a little different than the, the industry that we're in, right? Yeah, sure. And mm -hmm. uh, we're not really in the uh, technology delivery business, right? We're in healthcare and patient services. But what we do behind the scenes to enable that the patient satisfaction and patient outcomes uh, using this web scale technology or this Amazon-like uh, infrastructure is, uh, is something that we're going to continue to build and grow on. We'll, we'll never be in that position like Amazon is, but behind the scenes with automation and, and, the, and the infrastructure resiliency, using that same technology is what we're going to accomplish. So a big, big part of it, because you mentioned uh, some of the digital transformation you're doing up front. A big part of that cloud-like on-prem is making your people more productive. Exactly. Uh, and not you know, focused on provisioning LUNs and servers and that's right. Pl you know, plugging in cables, it's, it's really automating as, as much as possible. So right. have you seen the effect on non-differentiated IT labor in your shop? We have, um, so just within our team, uh, the, uh, the amount of time the engineers have to spend on just this specific in infrastructure has been greatly reduced. So we get to spend more time doing things like protecting our environment. Uh, you know, a lot of these, uh, these viruses have been coming out lately, these, uh, so these exploits. So we've been able to patch more diligently, uh, remediate issues, uh, and then we've seen other reduction in time for other teams. Storage team, they don't have to deal with our stuff anymore, they can focus in other areas, so it's, it's really been a shift in the way we do business. So just one more follow up, and then Stu wants to jump in. So, and this is a hard question to be precise on, but in rough terms, if you think in you know, rough percentage terms, how much you know, sort of, of the labor effort you've been able to shift to more interesting, the fun stuff as Stu calls it. Sure. Uh, is, it is it a 5% factor, a 20%, 50%, 100% factor? I wonder if you could just give us some Right now the, uh, the impact has been pretty small. If you look at the, our, our Nutanix infrastructure today, it's a very small portion of our overall infrastructure since it's right. fairly new. But uh, I can tell you the, uh, the time that we spend on that right now is very minimal and I have one engineer that oversees the entire infrastructure at this point freeing up multiple other uh, resources to do other things. So and, it's so, been an and so pre pre hyper converged, 
If you didn't go that direction, you'd have more than one engineer? Or? Um, I'd, have, I'd probably have at least three times as many. So three um, X factor, Just wow. because there's so many other components that you have to manage mm -hmm. that aren't just specific to that one stack. Mm -hmm. right. right. So, yeah. Don, you, you've got virtualization in your title. How do you look at virtualization today? Where are you in that journey? Uh, we've been hearing in a lot of these uh, shows that we've been at, you know, the virtualization feels like it's played out for the most part. We know where it is. Cloud has been the big discussion. Mm -hmm. where, where is it in your job? So, kind of two paths in, in, uh, in my infrastructure. We have server virtualization, which is traditional, you know, virtualizing the compute workload. And then also on uh, application virtualization, uh, so app delivery. And I think there's still a lot of room for growth in both of those aspects. Uh, application delivery is going to continue to morph and it can be delivered from multiple different platforms and I, I see it doing that over time. Server virtualization is a way to go. And what we're doing there is trying to continue to deliver the capacity you know, that we're at or continue to grow it but at the same time shrinking that hardware footprint and relieving some of the stress in the data center. Okay. And that's, it, and that's on server virtualization, what are you using today? For server virtualization, we use uh, VMware, mm -hmm. uh, ESX. Have, have you looked at the HV stuff at all? We or? have, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited about that. And it's kind of one of those things where you can't jump in with two feet right off the bat just because it is a little new and you feel like you need to really look at it really closely. But at the same time, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be a, a good long-term replacement as we continue to look it, at it. it. One of the, Nutanix has really been looking out for their future plans. One share, you know, what resonates with you and what, what about yourself? What kind of future strategy do you have? What are you looking for from the vendor community to, to help you do even more with your resources? So the, uh, the vendor community definitely, uh, this is kind of a new area for them. A lot of the application uh, vendors we talk to aren't really familiar with this platform. So I think as this product grows and as this uh, space grows, I think more vendor awareness is, is going to come about and they're going to be more comfortable with this as a solution. Okay, yeah, especially healthcare. It's all those ISVs that need to integrate and support and say, yes, exactly. I'm okay with it. We and saw that with virtualization at first. Yep. And, and healthcare and, and, is you know, always traditionally a little bit behind because it's a little more conservative space. So and I think it'll take a little bit of time for them to feel comfortable there as well. So what are the big problems you're trying to solve today from an infrastructure standpoint? Well, uh, you know, financial uh, issues are always a topic, right? So what we're trying to do is, uh, is deliver uh, infrastructure to support uh, our, our patients uh, in, a, in a cost effective way. So um, being as frugal uh, with the money that we do have and buying the right technology and not spending a lot of money on, on a diverse stack and, and wasting financial. I mean, you just basically you know, reduced your IT labor in that little part of the world by you know, a factor of you know, three X, yeah. as we talked about. Is there a gain sharing philosophy where some of that reduction comes back to you for innovation or is it just sort of go back to other parts of the hospital? It, 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 it will go back probably just to the bigger, yeah. to the bigger team. Uh, I mean, there are benefits to us you know, specifically that we're going to achieve, but overall th that time saving goes back and allows you know, different teams to do other things which overall will, will help improve our whole environment. So the keynotes today, and I was talking to you off camera about the one click migration, there was a, 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 a database migration and, and uh, I think it was one click DR as well, but yeah. I'm interested in the database stuff. You've got some experience with, with databases. I, that is, and th actually, let me ask you, is that part of the infrastructure definition? Is database on down? Right? It is, yeah. yep. Okay, so what was your reaction to the sort of one click database migration? It. It's, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Uh, I think that's going to help in the aspect of migrating workloads from, uh, from legacy or traditional to this new platform. There's a, I think there's, some, there's still some components that you have to consider. The migration is very nice but you know, validation, testing, all those kind of components also have to be part of that whole plan. So if I looked at the, I mean, database migrations can sometimes be real oh, hairballs. Yeah. Um, so if I, if I look at the cycle, you know, the anatomy of a migration, let's say it takes you know, an amount of time. What is that amount of time, you know, on average? I know it's a hard, it's, it's one it of those stupid average questions. It can vary based on size. Yeah, I know it's factors. a big, it depends. But what percent of that, that that value chain, if you will, that sequence chain, is Nutanix attacking with what you saw today in your view? Um, so what you do is reduce the, uh, the execution part of that migration and you probably reduce a lot of the planning phase of that because in any kind of a database migration there are so many factors that, that go into that and a lot of the discussion is around how we're going to move this workload to this new space. And Nutanix has solved that by taking care of the how and then you, know, you just need to figure out how you're going to validate, test it, and, and confirm that once it's there, everything continues to work as expected. So I think you've reduced the time of planning and execution both with that I mean, the planning piece has actually got to be a huge portion. Huge. Is it half of the total? It's probably at least half. Yeah, I would yeah. think so. Because yeah, the better least, you plan, the better half. you're going to execute, right? Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> okay, good. 
Well, Don, uh, I'll give you a last, last word on, on futures. What, uh, what kinds of things are you working on that you, know, so you can share us, with us? So uh, for us, the future is going to be to, uh, to continue to converge the stack. We're going to uh, continue to move forward with automation, uh, try to reduce the delivery time for, uh, for applications and servers and infrastructure, and uh, eventually simplify our, our management layer and uh, spend more time doing other things, doing more fun stuff, and that's, that's what we're looking to do. Love it, as I always say, love having the practitioners on, we get the pepper questions <laughs> and, and get the real story. So Don, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank the you Q. for having me, I appreciate it. You're very welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest right after this short break.